I think one of the most, and I'm not, I know every church does this, but just thinking about the importance of the black church. You know, the black church yes. is, it's rooted in history. It's rooted in escapism from slavery, from Jim Crow. Then we have the civil rights movement. But yes, I sir. think one of the most painful things the church has done is really um, hurt and harm gay people. Uh, mm-hmm. I always say there would be no black church with, without black gay folks. Black gay mm-hmm. folks have been faithfully serving the church since there was a black church, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I have a lot. I know friends who committed suicide. I know friends who uh, never got over that, uh, the burn in hell narrative or the uh, mm. uh, love the sinner, hate the sin type of stuff. And mm-hmm. it really is, I've seen, do some psychological deep harm to people. Um, what are your thoughts on that, and, being black and being gay and you're born and raised in the church and you don't want to leave the church, so you just sit in oppression? What are your thoughts of people for folks who, who have gone through that and they're still angry at uh, what they experience being naturally who they are? Yeah, I, I feel like um, one of the things that the church has done is that they haven't made it safe for people to say, I'm gay. I have three aunts that are gay. Um, uh, I have a, another family member who uh, has transgendered. And what we won't do is sit down with them and have the conversation, not around their church attendance, but around their fidelity to scripture. I had gay people that went to our church, two married couples, actually, um, a male married couple, gay male married couple, then a lesbian couple married uh, that attended our church. We went out to dinner with them, my wife and I, had conversations with them, heard their stories, and we did not agree theologically on their position, nor did they agree with mine, and they still attended our church because we were all clear and we had a conversation. I don't think disagreement is um, akin to hate. I believe that we have used scripture to hate gay people and then blame it on God. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about the conversation and it's about holding space for their narrative in the tension of ours. And even if we disagree, we can still coexist and be together Mm -hmm. that was my let let me ask you this though let let me ask you this though just to push this a little bit uh i fidelity to scripture so if you tell somebody not saying you but if if the narrative is you're going to burn in hell for being naturally who they are for me that's beyond a disagreement um because i always say when it comes to sexuality there is nothing to disagree or agree with. It's like saying you disagree with the sun rising or the sun setting. I mean, this is naturally who somebody is. And I think oftentimes we think of LGBT folks below the groin. We don't think of them above the groin. And even that narrative of, well, I don't agree with you, but I'll accept you, that I still think can be very harmful in a different way than what other folks say, burn in hell, I don't want you here, get out. I mean... Even within that, it still can be a painful space, and I, I struggle with uh, that. I don't want anybody to feel like someone has a right with their Bible to say who they naturally are is wrong. And I don't know how. I mean, what about how does that help us as Black folks? James Baldwin, Langston Hughes, like we are a part of this community. So, what's your response to that? Yeah, first of all, you it was very eloquently put. I love. The, the statement that you just said about below the growing and above the growing mm-hmm. um, in my conversations and I can only speak to my experiences. So in, in the conversations that I've had, no one has walked away with their feelings hurt or feeling like uh, this person doesn't love me for me and for them. We are both wrestling with the text where I have landed on my position is not even about what the text says about homosexuality and if it's a sin or not. For me, and this is a conclusion I've I've shared with all of my friends in the LGBTQIA plus community, if if we're saying the Bible guides our lives, I tell them, okay, let's remove all the scriptures that say that um, uh, homosexuality is a sin. For me, I still don't have precedence to say that homosexuality is approved because from Genesis to Revelation, which covers 
4,000 years of human history, there's never been one gay union or couple in the positive that God has said, th th these, are, these are people in the Bible in this narrative that continue to perpetuate our faith. Were there gay people in the Bible? Absolutely. In the book of Corinthians, Paul says, some of you were like this and then you were redeemed by Christ. So for me, it doesn't come down to my opinion versus their opinion. If, if they're calling themselves a believer in Jesus and they're holding themselves true to scripture, then we let scripture be the final authority. And where they have landed and concluded is different from where I have landed and concluded. And in that, those conclusions, we can agree to disagree without hurting each other and our feelings in the process. But even in the language of scripture, I mean, the Bible talks about eunuchs and people interpret that a particular kind of way. There's that one line where it says um, the, the, the love that David had for John was more than the love of a woman. I mean, I, um, I don't even believe, according to the Bible, that gay people are, are going to burn in hell. I mean, there's also scripture that's been used to, to oppress women, to oppress black folks. So we can, we can agree to disagree, brother, but I just, think it's, I just think it's really harmful to use that book to tell somebody who they naturally are is wrong. I just think it really well, well, hurts people. But we can yeah, see it differently. And, 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 yeah, and also, you're not, you're not gay, so you don't know what that experience is like. I mean, no, that, that Bible has been used so many times to hurt us. And I don't I want agree. someone else to be hurt just because they're gay. Absolutely. I don't want anybody to be hurt, too. And I do believe that the language that we use is harmful and hurtful. I don't mm -hmm. use the language of burn in hell, but mm -hmm. I do use the language that I find in Scripture that is um, loving towards those that want to open themselves up to a relationship with Jesus Christ. I think I think one of the things that um, has been problematic for the church is that the church has tried to tell people that don't want to accept Jesus how to live. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamentally wrong. If you do not want a relationship with Jesus Christ, then there is nothing in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that we can hold you to a standard to live out. But if mm -hmm. you're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, then we are bound by what we believe is our king's commandments for both mm -hmm. heterosexuals and homosexuals and anybody's background and belief system. They would all have to lay that down to be faithful to the teachings of Jesus in the way that he's told us to live our lives. I only have good news for unbelievers, people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. And that is that God loved them so much that he gave his son to die for them, shed his blood. But here's the other thing. For those that do accept him, I have bad news. <laughs> and the bad so, news so is. So you don't believe now you, you got to be gay and accept Jesus Christ. And you think those two are, are, are a conflict? Oh, not, not at all. I believe any person. No, I mean, being gay, life living your life. Let, let's say you're married. You know, you're married to your partner and you're gay and you believe in Christ and you believe in Christianity. You're saying they shouldn't do that because according to you, the scripture says that those things do not align. Homosexual, the practice of homosexual sex is a sin according to scripture. The I do not agree of, with you, brother. I do not agree fine. with you, Mr. Ross. But, but yeah, that's it, fine. It, yeah, but why? That is so hurtful to people, man. Because, because, because you're saying it in a softer way than, than what, than what um, other people have said. You're just making it a little bit prettier. I, I, the most important words in the Bible to me, it is God is love. And what you just said is not love. That's cruelty. Well, I, That's cruelty here, here, for people's hearts, man. But we could see it well, differently. But it's, it's kind of like when I'm talking to white folks and they have a vision about race and they can't relate because, because they're white talking about black folks. Like, this is an experience that you can't really... Go ahead. What, what, I, what I would say, Clay, is that to, to the statement that God is love, I agree, God is love, but all love has boundaries. And the boundaries that I see in Scripture that are expressed and walked out have a clear definition around marriage and how that is supposed to be expressed as 
a type and shadow of Christ's love for his bride. And from the book of Genesis all the way through Revelation, it starts with a man and a woman. If that narrative, no matter how soft I explain that, comes across hurtful, people have a choice, Clay. Nobody has to accept Jesus and follow his teachings. But if they do, and the Bible becomes their guide, then this is something that has to be laid down. And, and homosexuals are not the only one that have to lay down their sexuality. There's a whole lot of promiscuous heterosexuals out there that would love to continue to express their sexuality uh, uh, with as many polygamous partners as possible, but they would have to submit I think their that's sexuality a false equivalency. as well. You're comparing, you're comparing two people in a committed relationship who are married, and marriage is a government document, it's not a religious document, to people who are polyg for polygamous or whatever the case may be. I did a documentary for BET called Holler mm -hmm. If You Hear Me, Black and Gay mm -hmm. in the Church, and mm -hmm. I went to a homeless shelter in Atlanta. Every single person, every single black kid who was in that homeless shelter, they were kicked out of their home because of religion. The white kids were kicked out mm. for different reasons. And I know, mm. and I know okay, that, 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 that's not good. You may say that, but the reason why is because of doctrines like this. You know, I just got to stand in. I don't think love has boundaries. I think love is healing. I think love is evolution. I think love is a journey. And to quote James Baldwin, I think love is a growing up. I think love is a growing up. My brother, we got to go. I thank you for the spirit of conversation. I thank you for the spirit. It, it wouldn't be my show if I did it, you know, push oh, a little no, bit. Oh, no, I love it. <laughs> no, no, and, 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 I'm, and I'm fine with the pushing. The only thing that I would say back, not a pushback, but a say back is that as, as many people that you have been, that, that you have found that have been hurt by the church um, because of their sexuality, I know as many people who have found gray strength who are homosexual but have chosen to not express or practice homosexual sex because they want to honor Jesus and they have found the same healing, love, and community as those that feel like that they have it. So there and, is you know, a I know a lot of gay people, brother, that, that could be your anecdotal experience, but a lot of gay people I know they have found Jesus and they have walked in their, and their journey with, with, with Christ being in a loving, amazing relationship where they, they love God, they pay their taxes, they're good American citizens, and they are doing the best with all the dogmas and doctrines that they've been taught. So I know a lot of gay folks. I, I think I know a lot more than you. And they, well, I, and well I, yeah. So I, I can, well, let, I can let you know, me, I know people. This, Clay. Mm -hmm. let, let me just say this, because um, definitely we're not going to get into a gay count, but I would say <laughs> to, the, to, to those that you just mentioned, I love them too. They're still my friends. I don't want you to but think that this really disagreement. Don't? If if you if yeah, you say it that if you but is it really love? If if they have found love and you don't love their love, is it really love? Like I want us to yes. just be be. Yes. I, I just because it doesn't sound yes. like it. If you think that they are not aligned with Christ, I mean you don't know their 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 vessel, their journey to Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like is it really is it really really love? I mean, you found your love. That's great. You're you're a you're a, a successful guy. You do great stuff. But I would push back to say, is that really love? That's that sounds passive aggressive. It sounds like that mm. you somehow are um, are elevated spiritually over somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just I don't feel that doesn't feel like love to me in that context. But Understood. it's different for you. It's personal for me. You know, I did a whole doc on this personal for me. I know folks yeah. who killed themselves because of this. Who, who killed themselves. I know parents who said, I should have never did this to my son, who's now dead. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's very personal to me. So I, I, yeah. I and I can sense that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can, I can sense that. And, and I'm a very empathetic person. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to go another round that would um, um, flare up that pain that you felt. Um, and, and it and it actually moves me um, uh, to know that your love uh, for the gay community uh, has prompted you to be this passionate and this protective. And so I honor that. Well, and it's also my love for black people. You know, 
black gay folks go through hell from, from white people, from black straight folks. It's my love for James Baldwin, Bessie Smith, Audre Lorde, Alice Walker. It's my love for, these are very spiritual people. I believe Alice mm-hmm. Walker is, is a gift. I believe she is anointed, right? This is my love, and, and, and she writes the way that she writes because of her, her, her passions, her experiences, being whatever she is, queer, whatever they call it. It is mm-hmm. my love for black people. I don't want black folks to be thrown out or feel any kind of way when, when they are in black spaces. 